Hi everyone, my name is Agnes Fries and I'm the creator of an online design tool called the Grid Designer. The Grid Designer is used to create color charts for multiple crafts that includes cross stitch, latch hook, crochet, knitting, corner to corner crochet, and basically any craft where you need to create a grid based color chart. What I'm going to be showing in this video is how to draw an elephant that looks something like this. This was the elephant that I used in the um, in a in a blog post to make a sweater for my grandson. Um, I will leave uh, the link to the blog post in the description for this YouTube video. So just scroll down and look to get, to get that blog post. You can uh, scroll down and look at the description for the video in YouTube. Um, so I'm going to be showing how to do this. Now, this is a knitting project, but you know, if you are doing crochet grafkins or something like that, um, this all still applies to you. Um, I'm going to be showing how to how I create the project in here, uh, apply my knitting gauge, and then if you're doing crochet, you'd apply a crochet gauge. If you were doing this as a latch hook project, you know, that you could, this is the drawing part of this will be interesting to you too because um, I'm going to use some of the drawing tools uh, to do this and I'm going to use the um, I'm going to use the shape tool um, I'm going to be using um, some freehand drawing and I'm going to be using a lot of cutting and pasting um, and the reflection tool which will which is how I drew the symmetry in here take one ear copy and paste it and then you can there's a flip inside of the paste tools that will allow you to flip it to the other side to make kind of something that looks symmetric um, so there'll be some, a lot of drawing and that kind of thing. I'm working with a, would be working with a palette, mo kind of modifying a palette to get the colors that I want in here, um, that kind of thing. So, so all of this really applies. It's not, you shouldn't think of it, oh, it's a knitting project. I'm not interested. You should think this is a drawing project and I want to see how I would draw something in the grid designer. And this, that's what this project is really showing. Okay, um, so when I'm going to draw something like this, I usually look for some examples. So what I did when I drew this uh, picture was I went to Google and I Googled uh, baby elephant drawings. And then and you cl I clicked on the images section that came up. And, um, and then I've got all these baby elephants. So, um, and I think the ones that look the cutest, you know, are the ones that are sitting like this with the feet in the front and the, and the legs out. Um, I really like that. So that's kind of what I was trying to draw, something like this or this one. And since, you know, I, I, I'm not the, the greatest person for drawing things, I'm going to just do it symmetrically. I'm not going to do it very... Um, you know, very symmetric and very simple. I'm going to keep my drawing as simple as I can. Um, and, you know, looking through here, there's quite a bit of variation, you know, in the way these are drawn here. The, here the ears are kind of drooping down and, and these ones over here actually have a little bit of a point on them, uh, which is interesting. And, you know, I think of the them as being, ears as being a little bit rounder than that. So I'll probably draw something more like, like more like this one. Maybe this is kind of very symmetric, kind of like the kind of thing that I want to draw. Okay, so looking at some pictures though will give you some ideas, you know. And as you're trying to draw something yourself, you can you can look at some of the look at pictures online, um, and you know, kind of get some ideas about how you want your drawing to to go. Okay, so to get to the grid designer, the simplest way to do that is to go to freeze-works.com, F-R-E-E-S-E-W-O-R-K-S.com, and just click on the grid designer tab up at the top. That'll start up the grid designer for you. Okay, so now we're in the grid designer, um, and I'm going to be creating a project. So I want to go to project menu and pick new project. Okay, it's going to be a knitting project. And as I said, it could be a crochet project. You could do exactly the same thing with that or with latch hook or cross stitch or anything else that you wanted to draw. So let's go and pick, we'll pick knitting though for this one. And um, I'm gonna, I've actually worked up a sample swatch, which is four inches by four inches. And it had 28 rows and 21 stitches, I believe. 
And I was using Burnett Baby Soft Yarn. There's more about that in the blog post, um, size six needles. Um, so that was my that was my gauge. And as I worked out the pattern for my sweater, I decided that I that my available space on the front of this uh, little sweater is 58 rows by 63 63 columns. Okay, so 58 rows, 63 stitches basically across. That's that's my area. Now I don't have a a palette yet made in the grid designer for uh, Burnett Baby Softy yarn. I had a bunch of that left over from another project, mostly blue and white, and so that's what I was going to use to make the sweater. Um, but I don't have there's no palette in here for that particular yarn, so I'm going to just leave this uh, set to the default for right now, and I'm going to show you then what I'm going to do about that um, in a second. So we're going to click Create Project, and now we have a project. Okay, so we've got our 58 rows and 63 columns here, and and notice that the the um, the cells are kind of rectangular shaped because they that's that that's computed from the knitting gauge uh, that you put into that into that um, creation uh, dialog. Okay, so to deal with the palette now, I'm going to go look down here because after you after you create the project, you can change your palette at literally any time. Okay, and and it will there's a way for it to update your colors and that kind of thing if you want to switch from one palette to another. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to pick this palette option from the project menu. And right now the brights palette is what's selected. That's kind of like a simple little default project. Um, these ones that are marked general, these are kind of general groupings of colors uh, that might be useful for you know creating your creating your patterns, creating your own your own projects. Um, and there are also things that are actually collections of colors that are that come from you know physical yarn or floss. And in this case, there are two embroidery flosses up here. One is the anchor stranded cotton. One is the DMC embroidery floss. So these are colors that come out of you know the the full list of those those uh, colors for floss. And likewise, there are pre-cut rug yarns down here, which provide lists of colors. Um, and there I have a bunch of medium weight worsted um, worsted weight yarns down here also, but I don't have any baby yarns yet in here. So I'm going to need to use one of these palettes. I can also go to custom and in custom you can insert colors. You can pick from a, a color chart um, and insert the colors that you want. That's one way of doing this, but I, I have this kind of I have this idea that I, it's, it's simpler for me to just look at the colors on the screen and pick something that I want out of an existing palette. So what I'm actually going to use is this anchor stranded cotton. When I do cross stitch, I'm usually using the DMC embroidery floss. So this is a palette that I don't normally use for uh, embroidery. So I'm going to pick this particular palette and then I'm going to say edit palette. Okay, and now what I want this these both of these embroidery floss palettes have like 500 colors in them. So like everything that you possibly could pick is in here. What we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to hide all the colors that we don't care about in this palette, and I'm going to pick out the white and the blues that I want uh, out of this palette and just show just those colors. So that's my intention here. So I go in here, I edit this palette and I click on this button down here that says hide all. Okay. And notice that all the little colors have H on them for hidden. So now all the colors in the palette have been hidden. Okay. And now I'm going to pick on the colors that I want. I need white. So I'm going to say click on this white and then I'm going to click on the show button. And then notice that the H goes away. So it's no longer hidden. That's a color that I will see after I, when I start using the palette to draw things. So that white is picked. Then I want to pick a light blue. Let's pick something down here. And it's kind of a little bit, maybe something like that. 
And you can have your yarn in front of you while you're doing this, you know, so you can pick out a color that you that that looks right on your computer screen and kind of matches, you know, what you what it, what the yarn looks like as it sits in front of you. Um, so we'll, we'll show that. OK, and then um, and then what it does is it takes the H off of that color and it puts it up here at the top. So if you can you see your color disappear from the list, it's not gone. It's up here at the top. So now I have the white and the light blue. And now we need kind of more of a medium bluey thing. It looks and the yarn that I have has almost a little bit of a, a green tint to it. I think it's I think the color is called blue jeans um, in the uh, baby softy yarn. So let's pick that and then we need a nice deep dark blue. OK, and now what has happened is these colors that I picked are now up here at the top of the palette. The H's are off of those, and I've basically reduced the number of colors in this palette to just these four. Those are the only four that I want to see. I don't need to see the other 500, you know, in my list of colors to pick from. I just reduced it down to these four. So now I'm going to say Save Palette, and then I'm going to say Use Palette. Okay. Now, I have a choice of either opening a brand new project using this palette, or I could just convert the project that I have. There's really nothing drawn here. I could go and just say open new project, but I'm, I'm going to click convert current project. And then what it does when you convert the project is it all the colors that are used in the pattern, then you need to pick a new color to replace those, replace that color that was used. Now, right now, only the red is being used and that's my background color. I want white to be there because I'm going to be doing this elephant pattern on top of white. And that's the only color in the list because it's the only color that was used so far in uh, what I have here because I have nothing drawn. Then I say convert pattern. It'll warn you a little bit that the current work is not saved, but that's not a problem because we're not, um, we don't have anything to save. So we'll just say go ahead with that. And then when I do it that way, um, the white that replaced the background color is actually set up here as the background color for the uh, for the project. Okay, so this is uh, uh, these two things up here show you the background color and the foreground color. The foreground color is generally the thing that you use to uh, draw with, and the background color is usually what you use to erase with. So that's the difference between those two colors. And the tools then work differently. Certain tools will draw uh, background colors. Some tools will draw the foreground color. So um, there is a tools video that you might be interested um, that shows the drawing tools and explains a lot of this information and goes through all the drawing tools down here at the bottom. So you might be interested in that video also. OK, so what we need to do is our foreground color is white. And if we started to draw with that, that wouldn't work very well because we'd be drawing white on white. So we need to change this to a different color. I'm going to go, let's do the dark blue. I'm going to start by drawing the outline the, of, the, uh, of the elephant, and then we'll fill in with uh, color later. So I'm just going to increase this a little bit. Um, there's a zoom and a zoom out button up here that you can use to size your, size your um, project so that you can see what see uh, see it well. OK, so I'm just going to go down here and click on my drawing tool. And then I'm going to try and draw an elephant head. So I'm just going to do this freehand drawing. Maybe I'll just go all the way around here and see what I come up with. Um, hmm, not sure I like either side. I probably like this side best, but I don't like this little bump over here. So um, one of the things you can do when you're on the um, on a desktop machine that has a regular mouse with a left and a right mouse button, then you can use those buttons separately to draw and erase. So if you have a left and a right mouse button, then the left mouse button will draw with the foreground color and the right mouse button will draw with the background color or effectively it will erase. So I can go in here and I can I can click on this with the right mouse button, click there, click here and that will erase that side like that and then left mouse button will draw. 
So um, a little that looks a little flat. Maybe let's just take off on some of these edges here. And I think I'm going to maybe make that a little bit flatter there. Let's see how that looks. That might be OK. OK, so um, so I didn't kind of like this side either because I had kind of that lump over there. So what I'm going to do now is just make a symmetric drawing out of this. So I'm going to be selecting the left side of this, and then I'm going to copy and paste it, and then flip it while it's in the paste buffer to the other side, and then put, put this, I'm going to reflect this left side over to the right side to draw the other side of the elephant and have it be exactly the same. So what I can do here is I can pick the selection rectangle and I'm going to go over here and pick the left side of the head like that. I'm not sure whether I want to take that one or that one. Okay, so I do that, select it with a rectangle, and then I am just going to do a copy of that and then a paste of that. So now I have a copy of my left side. And then I'm going to click on the flip uh, selection horizontally. That's going to reflect it over to the right side. And then I can drag this over here. OK, and that, that looks pretty good for me. I think that looks good. Now, again, there's a drawing tools video that you can watch that will tell you more about all of this stuff. Um, but there's two ways. Once you're in the in the paste area here, there is a paste. There are paste tools down here, and there's two ways to apply this to the grid. You can click on the blue button, which will apply it once, and then it will return you to the main editor buttons down here. Um, or you can click on stamp. If you want to make a copy of something multiple times on your design, then the stamp tool will do that for you. You can it'll it'll keep you it'll you'll you'll stay here with the, your your paste item and you can keep stamping it in different places and applying it to grid. But we're only going to do this once, so I'm going to just click on the apply to grid. Okay, that looks pretty good. That that's not a bad shape. Um, at this point, I think I might go and save this because I'm starting to have some drawing here. I'll just say my elephant, have something like that, and say save project. Okay, so I know I have a, I've saved it there. Okay, now I'm going to take my tool, my drawing tool here, and I'm just going to try and draw some ears. Ears. Maybe I'll just draw an ear on one side here. Maybe something like that. Um, again, I, I can just right click here to erase these. Now, if you're on a tablet or an iPhone, then you have to click on the erase button to get the erase tool. And then you can, you know, press with your finger on the screen to erase sections. But if you're on, uh, uh, you know, a regular machine where you've got uh, left and right uh, mouse buttons, then you can just erase with the right mouse button, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm going to take out some of those edges there makes it look a little bit rounder without that maybe even that too okay now that that ear looks pretty much okay to me so i'm going to go down here pick my select rectangle tool again and i'm going to reflect this over to the other side also so i'm going to pick up my ear here put the uh, selection rectangle around it then i'm going to say copy and i'm going to say paste and then I'm going to pick the reflect, this uh, reflection tool here, flip the selection horizontally. And then we're going to come over here. And we want to put this in the same position. That looks like it's right. There's two there, two there, and one down here. So that looks like that's in the right place. And then I'm going to click Apply again to apply that to the grid. OK. And then we'll just do a quick save to make sure that that's, that's saved. OK. Now, let's go in here and do the drawing of the trunk. I think that would be the next piece to draw. So looking back at my pictures here that I Googled, um, you notice that the trunk, usually there's a line that basically comes kind of out of the lower middle of the face. That's the same down here with this one. 
um, and this one here is that way. Sometimes it's not. This one doesn't do that. It just kind of draws the whole jawline together, but I think it looks better if it comes out. And that's the way most of these pictures are drawn. So there's a little bit of a line there on each side, on each side that we need to draw that's going to start the trunk coming out. Okay, so let's do that. Let's pick our tool here. Oh, oh, and maybe I'll put the, let me put some eyes in here real quick first. So I have kind of a idea for where the face is going. Let's see. Um, maybe something like that with some eyebrows. That's not the right place for that. There, more like that. So they're fairly wide apart. Okay, and then let's see what we can do here. Let's start our trunk out and see what happens. So we're going to go down here and then kind of loop it around and maybe end up in about the same place. So we have kind of a smiley. This this little you know little thing here I think is important just because it makes it look a little a little smileier um, you know than it would normally and we could even do it could do it like that but not sure which way it looks better but anyway that's generally kind of a trunk there maybe got a little too much clear out some of these extra little things down here maybe streamline it a little bit and then this we wouldn't see that line there through the trunk so that would go away and I don't know maybe it would be better to put it down just a little bit something like that because the face is fairly long okay okay I think that's not too bad let's go ahead and save that Good to save your progress as you go okay so the next thing that we want to do is we want to start drawing the body and the feet now the feet all end in kind of like a little oval if you look at these back feet here and then we're going to draw we need to draw a slope that comes down and uh, and goes kind of smoothly into the feet that's basically how this works right that's how all these are basically drawn so let's draw the foot first so i'm going to click on the draw shape tool we're going to draw the little oval that's at the end of the foot and um, this could be filled because it could fill with white, but you could also pick outline here and that will just draw the blue outline on the outside. So let's pick that oval and say use shape. Okay. And then the question is how big should this be? Maybe like that. I'm not sure exactly. Let's, uh, we're going to have two of these. Let's stamp one there so I click the stamp button this time and that gives me the another copy of it to paste and move around so I've got that kind of just over here if I slide it over here I think it's about right there because there's this line here where the single one comes down on the left side of this pair of two and this one here comes down on the left side of that pair of two and since it's the last time I'm stamping it basically I'm going to just say apply to grid so now I have two feet the ends of two feet that are kind of out there in space and now we need to draw something that comes down you know from the elephant's shoulder and we're just going to have to kind of wing that there right click here to undo some of those you'd have to use the erase tool if you were on a on a um iPad or an iPhone. Okay, so it's something like that. All right, so let me just try and draw that in over here. It comes from, it looks like, so this, this one here, then there's one, and then it comes from here. So it's coming down this way, and it's coming up from here. There are three diagonal ones like that, and then it goes behind the trunk there. Okay, so now we've got two feet kind of on either side now we need two feet to two legs to be drawn in the middle here looking back at our drawings again we've got to draw these two feet in the middle here that's the next thing to do so um, let's see let's start where's my middle this is kind of the middle between the two eyes 
it looks like there are five spaces here, one center thing. So if I wanted to kind of find the middle of the elephant, it would be about in here. So let's try something like that. That's probably not far enough down. Maybe something like that would work. Let's see. Okay. And that kind of comes up against the other one. I wonder if we what we can do there to make that look a little better. Well, I'm not sure. I may want to whoops. May want to move the feet out just a little bit. That looks the same on both sides. But we've got kind of this heavy line here because both of these lines come together. So I think it might be a good idea to just kind of grab the foot, move it out one, move it out one on the other side and leave ourselves a little bit of space there. So I'm just going to use my selection tool again. And I'm going to grab this here. And this time I want to, um, I guess I could, could use copy, but I'm going to show you that you can also use cut. Cut will basically remove it from the picture first. And then when you do paste, you get a copy of it. And it was right here like this. So we want to move that over a little bit. So let's say apply. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we're going to say cut and then paste. And it was right here. We want to move it over one and then say apply. Okay, so now let's go back to my drawing tool. Let's erase that. And let's see. Let's put another, we want to put another something in here to kind of connect the foot. And then these legs look to me like they could be a little bit lower. So um, let's select them and move them down one. Now there are, there's generally most things we can do with the selection rectangle, but there are other ways of selecting things too. There is a single color motif selection, which is what I'm going to use here. That will select everything that's connected of a single color, whatever color you click on. I'm going to say select the single color. There's a, the first time you use it, it'll come up with a little hint that tells you what to do. And basically I have these, these legs are kind of out here. They're floating in space. They're connected to each other, but they're not connected to the rest of the elephant. So I can use that tool to select them. I could have actually probably got the rectangle around that, but I just wanted to show you that you can also select things in this way. So we can say, I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to paste it. And then I want to just move it down a bit. I think I want it like that. I want it a little bit higher than the other legs, but not as high as it was. Okay, so let's do that and we'll apply it. Okay, then going back to our drawing tool, we're going to have to fill in. It's going to have to be a little bit, you know, to put a line all the way across the bottom of the elephant there. Okay, great. All right, now let's use the fill tool. Okay, so we're going to say fill. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pick my medium blue. And I'm going to put that in. It's a little dark and it came out a little dark on the sweater too, but I'm, I'm good with that. So let's just fill all of our spaces in here. That's the center of that elephant's tummy there. Okay. And then what I did was I used the lighter color with the uh, drawing tool to just draw some little highlights in here, some, uh, you know, uh, little toenails where the feet are. And I think I and also colored in the end of the elephant's trunk with something like that. 
So we can do something like that. I think maybe, maybe not this one. Maybe I don't want that one. Let's go back again and let's see. How do I want to do this? Maybe something like that. Not sure. Maybe that should be a dark one right there at the top of the trunk, something like that. Okay, so that's the general idea. Um, and then what I did was I also uh, purchased a little bit of green that I didn't have before. And I thought, well, some other colors would be nice on here. So I went and got the, um, I went and added some green later on. And um, to add something, so we don't have green in our list down here, but anytime we want, we can go in here to the palette editor. We can say edit palette. Now the only thing you can't edit is you can't remove these colors. And this little icon down here in the bottom corner, that means that this color is currently used in your picture and whatever you're editing. So these, you cannot hide them or you, and you can't get rid of them. Um, you, they, anything that's being used in your picture, that's the only restriction in here. Let's now find um, kind of a light, it's kind of a light springy sort of green. And we'll just add that. Um, let's see, so let's say show. So now it's up here. Okay, so then we can say save palette, use palette. Okay, and then, oops, over here. Now we have our green here. So now we can go in and pick our green pick our drawing tool and we can draw a little grass down here. You know, whatever we want to do. And I could probably do that and fill that in in a second. So we've got some grass in here. Maybe we'd leave some things and we can just kind of fill that with that. Fill over here. Maybe draw a little bit more on that side, something or other. Okay. And once I put the green in there, then I thought, well, it might be nice to have a hat on top of the elephant too, because that'll put some of the green up at the top too. So I drew, um, oh, let me go ahead and save. Let's do a save. And then we'll draw some more green up here. Save is good in case I, you know, mess this up by drawing the hat here. So, and maybe a little, kind of a little round cap on the top of it. Um, and let's see, let's try filling that in. And then I think we need the blue tool. And let me show you here also that there is an outline area tool here. We can pick outline. That will draw blue all around us, all around whatever area we select. So that's the outline tool. And now go back to the draw and maybe we'll have a little section. So it's kind of like a cap with a little hat under it. And maybe that should have been down a little bit lower, maybe. So let's fill that in and then maybe add a little bit of green in here. Something like that. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's the basic idea um, for doing this drawing. Um, I think I've I think I pretty much put everything in. Let me take a look at my original painting. Oh yeah, I forgot the ears. Oh, and the tail too. So let's go over, let's go back over to here. Okay, and let's draw a little bit of a tail. Let's use this medium color. And maybe some of the dark color at the end. Something like that. So we have a little bit of a tail coming up. Maybe I'll fill that in down there, something like that. And then um, the ears, also I, I, I uh, put a lighter area inside of the ears here. So let's take, initially I did this with the lighter blue. And let's see, I want to change this. I want to have some of this darker blue here. So what I can do is I can set the background color temporarily 
to this other blue. And that allows me to draw with two colors at the same time, even though one of them is not technically, you know, my background background color of white. I can still set this temporarily to something else. So I use my right mouse button to draw that, left mouse button to draw the other color in here. And maybe we'll put some blue there. Maybe that's a little too close there. Then we can use the fill tool to fill with the rest of this lighter colored. And then over here, we can also draw something like that. And again, probably it's useful to have set the, um, the other color that I'm drawing against as my background color temporarily. I can then set that back to white um, when I'm done with that. And then I can fill on the other side. Now, when I actually did do this, I did this with duplicate stitch over the knitting and it was a little bit, it makes it, it makes the knitting fairly heavy. And so I did, I ended up with the uh, using white in here instead of just letting the background color show through because it reduced the amount of duplicate stitching there. So I ended up with white in that area instead of the light blue, but I drew it that way initially. Um, so I could fill it with, and also the fill tool, I can do the background color with a right mouse click. Okay, so there we go. So that's that looks like about it. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you'd like to see more. Um, and uh, happy designing. Bye-bye.